I think what I'd like to do is just help people with looking at this solution in a different way, looking at ways to make it more efficient, maybe even questioning what they're doing at the moment. Because, yeah, a lot of people got the blinkers on and a lot of people just stuck in that rut or they're content with what they've got. But what they don't realise is that there's something better out there. You're listening to Elevate, the official podcast of elite agent for real estate industry sales professionals, property managers, and leaders. With thanks to our partner, Connect Now, Elevate brings you the best tools, thinking, and strategies to elevate your results. To download your written action guide from this podcast containing extra tips, links, and shortcuts, visit eliteagentelevate.com. And for more information about how Connect Now can make moving easier on your clients, Visit connectnow.com.au. Here is your host, Samantha McLean. Welcome to another episode of the Elevate Podcast, where we delve into some of the most interesting minds in business and in real estate for the very best tips and strategies for you to implement to elevate your business. I'm Samantha McLean, editor of Elite Agent and host of this week's show. Joining me today is Trevor Bragg. Trevor is the head of sales at Eagle Software, and he's been advising real estate business owners on the best way to use technology in their business for more than two decades. He's a master of CRM, e-marketing, property data, mobile apps, and numerous other digital platforms that help everyone in the industry to thrive. Trevor, welcome to the show. Hi, Samantha. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so you're a new regular in Elite Agent, and we're getting to know some of our new regulars because bit of a, a new vibe in this post-COVID world. So tell us a little bit first about your role at Eagle Software. In my role as head of sales, I look after a team of people who are out there presenting the product to people, just making sure that we're, we're presenting the right way, we're delivering the best solutions for our clients, and just making sure that we hit our numbers as well. We've all got targets to meet and, yeah, just making sure we're on top of things. Yeah, so... There's quite a few real estate CRMs out there. What do you consider to be Eagle Software's superpower? We ask our clients and prospective clients what they like about it. So it's not just me saying this. And the feedback we get from people is that they really enjoy the ease of use of our CRM. When they have a look or when they log in, it makes sense. So the logic is very good. Where do I go next after this step? And the other thing that really appeals to people is our level of automation. The automation, again, adds to that simplicity of the CRM. It, it, it just means that agents out in the field don't have to spend as much time in the CRM because a lot of the automations are doing things on their behalf. So it frees up a lot of time for them. That time can be spent you know, doing more calls, more appointments, or even you know, more time with family and friends. You know, So they're not stuck to the computer. And that, and that really excites us. And it also allows them to set up workflows within their office. Everyone wants the business to run a certain way. And unfortunately, they can't work out how to implement it within their current system. So when they see how we do it, it makes sense. And they can very quickly and easily implement that or use our pre-written automations and just tweak them a little bit and off they go. So it's really exciting. Yeah, absolutely. I want to get into some of that stuff with you, actually. I just want to sort of backtrack a little bit because you've been in the real estate industry for quite a while. I think we worked out the other day when we were chatting. So how long have you been in real estate? Yeah, it's well over 20 years. Yeah, I've been with a few providers. I initially started working in a real estate office and I suppose my principal at the time was Terry Heitman out at Penrith Professionals and he was really wanting someone to look at databasing. So that was my role, building the database for the office. And at the time, we got RP data into our office. And that was really exciting because this was new technology. This was when the internet was just beginning and email was a brand new thing as well. So, And that's where my love of the CRM and database really started. And then I spent a bit of time there. And then I went into RP data and I spent 10 years at RP data. So I was there around the 500 client mark. So really early days. And then, you know, they've gone on to bigger and better things without me, but that's fine. You know, we all need different challenges and so forth in, in what we do. And then I spent some time at a company called Paul Plus that eventually merged with Consult. So another five years there. So I, I have been around and I also work for another company that um, does email marketing. But all of it really centered around the database, you know, communicating with people and how do we do that efficiently yeah. in the best way, yeah. That's interesting that you were at CoreLogic or RP Data in the early days. Like I remember hearing a story about how the founder of CoreLogic used to get in his car and go and actually take photos of 
That is true. That yeah, is true. We, we actually had a team of people who would go out and physically walk the streets and take photos of every single property. Quite interestingly, my brother actually did that and he had to go and take a photo of a, a bikey's property, which he wasn't too <laughs> keen about. I think after that he gave up the role. But yeah, I suppose what it shows is the level of commitment it takes to build a database that eventually has value. It doesn't just come to you. You've got to put the effort in. You've got to work it. You've got to tidy the data. You've got to keep doing that and then eventually it pays off for you. So we know that a good CRM is essential to an agent's business. So in your opinion, what are some of the things that agents should be doing daily to keep their database in top shape? They should definitely be looking at the data every day. And and one of the big tips I give people is if there's any data that needs to be changed, do it straight away because you tend to forget and then the data becomes old and stale. So, you know, if you do get someone's phone number or their email address, you know, put it in the app up which will update the CRM as well. Do it straight away. Don't get complacent with the data. Really nurture it. And that's a bit of a a buzzword around there, but it's so true. You have to nurture that data. You have to make sure you're on top of it. You have to be very diligent in who can actually change things in the database as well. And I think I'm referring more about groups and that type of top-level management of the database and getting group buy-in as well from the team, you know, making sure that everyone's aware of the responsibilities of maintaining the data. And if you do that, it means that everyone benefits from it. And some of these offices and the amount of data that they come in contact with every day, they should really have the best database ever, you know, because it just needs to be cultivated, nurtured, entered and then they can lessen their reliance on some of those other big data providers, you know, if they start to build that within their own office or their own CRM. That's very true, actually. We do this program called Transform where we get people to update at least five names in their database a day and it doesn't sound like much, but it really does add up over time. It does, yeah. What are some of the key dates that you think agents should really be tracking? Definitely on the sales side, the sold date. I suppose a lot of people do want to stay in touch with past sellers and there's nothing worse in real estate than driving by a property that you have previously sold with another agent signboard on it a few years later. Everyone hates that. Our clients always want us to help them implement a past purchaser anniversary contact, whether that's an email, an SMS, letter even, or even a phone call. That's really important. So that that's one of the big ones. The birthday message is really nice. You know, my local agent, every birthday I get a text from, whether it's automated or not, I don't know, but I feel good receiving that SMS. So those types of anniversaries are quite good, the birthdays. Outside of that, yeah, not too many more, but yeah, who knows? Agents out there are quite creative and um, yeah, we like to work with them with whatever ideas they have. So you just touched on automation there and I know one of the things that Eagle Software does quite well is the email sequence because you can capture an email address from say your website or from an open home or something like that and then put that person into some sort of a nurture sequence. Some people listening here are probably going, what is she talking about? Email sequence, nurture sequence, whatever. So just for the people that are new to this stuff, can you explain what that is? Yeah, certainly. So what it means is sitting in the background of your CRM is a sequence of steps, I suppose, in how we're going to communicate with this person. So with our CRM, for example, and if an inquiry comes into the office, be it for sale or for rent, we can have an automation that runs against that inquiry. So we capture it from the portals. That person is also created within the CRM, so we're not relying on the agent to have to enter that data. From that, we can also look at the property that they have inquired on and make an assumption that that's similar to what they're after. So let's send them other listings that are similar. So that's another point of contact. Then we have time delays. Of course, obviously, we don't want to bombard them with too much information all in one go. So if we can spread out these communications over the course of maybe a few days, so one day later, there might be a follow-up task for the agent to call. So that task reminder will go to their email or appear in their task list. Then maybe a day later after that, there's another follow-up email to see if they had any questions regarding the property they inquired on. Then we might wait two days and then they could be invited to possibly the open home that's occurring in a few days' time. So that's a very simple automated sequence or a workflow that you can implement. And literally the agents haven't done anything. They haven't touched it except for maybe making that phone call. We want them to have more conversations with people and not be sitting there typing out emails. 
So it's also not just about email after email. No. It's actually, you know, I might inquire on a property and then somebody will get a reminder in two days to give me a call. Yeah. Or I've sold a property and that date goes into the system and then someone might get a reminder to send me a, an anniversary card or something yeah, like that. That's right. Yeah, the automation won't do everything for you. You still have to make those calls. Won't make the coffee. I made the coffee, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're working on that one. But no. And that's the thing. There is a balance with automation. You you can't rely on it solely. At the end of the be open to new possibilities yeah. with your CRM and your data. Open your eyes. There's a bigger world out there, information as well, because, yes, they inquired on a property, but there was obviously something not right with it, and you need to find out what that is and maybe recommend other properties or yeah. talk to them more. Yeah. Can you do stuff like, I mean, I know in our email system we use Active Campaign because it's pretty good for publishers. It does a bunch of things. But let's just say uh, I inquired on a property and then you send me an email following me up on that property and that property is not suitable. Can you then do things like, because I know in Active Campaign we do this, we send someone an email to say, okay, thanks for subscribing. We're going to send you updates periodically, but can you tell me what you're interested in? Are you interested in investor information? Are you interested in buying, selling, whatever? And then we can tag them and then nurture them in different ways. Definitely. So in this day and age with the email marketing technology that's there, we can obviously monitor what they're doing. And again, that's another area that we should be looking at. We should be saying, okay, where are they engaging? What are they clicking on? How can we use that information to help better serve them so we can, yeah, put them into a different group or category? We could set up a different automated workflow, which might, for example, you have a first home buyer who makes an inquiry. So we want to send them some of the latest information on all the grants that are available first yeah. home buyers, rather than just taking a generic approach to it. So we really want to try and service people specific to their needs. There is a plethora of information out there. And I guess that's the thing is you really want to be giving people what they specifically want and making it a bit more personal because I think some people out there take automation to the extreme and try to automate everything and then you end up getting these tone deaf emails that have got nothing to do with what you came for in the first place. It's really worthwhile just to take the time to look at the communications and try and word them so that they're more friendly and down to earth as though you were talking to a friend essentially. And we've got some clients that have done some really great automated emails, you know, ones where they're even saying to them, look, I know you haven't come back to me. Why don't we catch up for a coffee, you know, next week? And that's all built into the automation. It's really quite clever how they do it. Yeah. And, and there's no limit to that. Yeah, you can have those canned, spammy responses. They're fine. But I think what we really want is to personalise that as much as possible. And that's really why we encourage our clients to look at the time delays between the communications. Okay, so it's not happening all the time. It is spread out. It's logical. And the client is not aware that it is automated. Yeah, because, you know, like I think we get something like 122 on average emails every day in our inbox and so getting cut through is even harder. But yeah. that was a good tip. So I'm just going to summarise that again just in case anyone out there is taking notes or you can take – you can obviously grab our notes on this, but you talk to the person like a person. That's right. Rather than – like an email system that makes them feel like it's more personal, like talking to me, not, that's right. not just a bunch of like a big email broadcast. Yeah, that's right. So maybe look at the emails you get from the bank or your insurer and try and avoid those. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Think about, yeah, if I was to write this email to someone directly, how would I write it? And yeah. that's how you build your emails. Yeah. Yeah. I guess the other thing too is that, you know, I receive a lot of emails from agents as well and yeah even though I'm not in the market for buying a property in this area at the moment anyway, maybe in another area, but yeah. not this one. And I just get the just listed, just sold. Yeah. And so to me, that's pretty tone deaf because yeah. I'm not in the market right now. So, sure. so here you can kind of say, all right, for these people that are in the market, I'm going to send them this. Yeah. And for people that I just want to keep in touch with, I'm going to send them this. That's right. Yeah. We have automatic campaigns and we encourage our clients to stay in touch with people in the database who are probably not in the market, but we want to keep them updated with what we've been doing. So those types of campaigns could be set to go out every quarter or every six months. It's really up to you what you want to do in that regard. What we're very excited about is we... You know, you just listed and you just sold to the street where you're doing your letterbox drops. We can now automate that. 
in electronic format. So not just email, but also text messages. So mm -hmm. if you're cultivating your addresses database, which is what we call it, so you have a, a farming area and you know all the owners in the street and you have their contact details, if you list a property in the street, our system will be able to automatically communicate with the owners in that street, letting them know about the just listed or the sold. Yeah, well, so that's, that's fantastic. So yeah. you list a property and then you email the people saying, I've just listed this in the street. Yep. Can I update you on what your property's worth exactly. or something like that? Yeah. I even wrote one for someone where I'm saying something along the lines of, by the way, you're getting new neighbours. And it's a different type of message rather than just listed, just sold. Oh, that's which a can... good subject line. I like that. <laughs> yeah, try and mix it up. Try and be a little bit different because, as you said, 112 emails going to your inbox every day, you've got to cut through that noise. So you have to take different approach to how you write your communications, not just emails but SMS as well. SMS is very popular. What we've found is that you get a much better response from SMS. Emails, you do get a response, but you do get a much more better response sending SMS. Now, there is a trade-off. SMS is a little bit more expensive, but if you really want that engagement, then you might consider doing that type of campaign or you could do a combination of both. Yeah, well, that's true actually because we get way less SMSs than we do emails. So, yeah, yeah, much more likely to get cut through. That's right. Interesting. So, we could talk about email all day, <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about some of the other stuff. So, email is not the only way that you can automate functions as an agent. No. You can actually save a fair bit of time. And that was actually the topic of your article in Elite Agent in the autumn issue. So, can you tell me about a couple of the other things that you recommend agents automate with their CRM? One thing that we've identified is that agents are not always the best at putting people into groups. So you can, through automation, ensure that people are going into the right group because there's nothing worse than sending a message to a group and it's not hitting the mark. It's the wrong message. So that's one way. Another area that we touched on was with email and calendar sync. So everyone's using email. Everyone uses their calendars. So just automating your appointments to go from the CRM into your personal calendar, be it Office 365 or G Suite or whatever you're using on your phone, just taking that step out of the process for you. So if you book in an inspection through the CRM, that appointment will appear in your phone calendar. Okay, so just another little one. So there's all those that make it a lot easier for people. And with email as well, email sync, very important. So again, by having those emails copied into the CRM and they're against the client file, it means that it's the one true source of information. All the information is held on this client in here. So if you needed to find an email, you're not trawling through your sent folder looking for that email or, you know, so so there's little things like that as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the other advantage is you're not sort of trying to fight through all of your emails in your personal inbox. No, Which would right. just save you a heap of time as well. Exactly. What about changing CRMs? Like, because um, what's some, what are some of the mistakes that you see with agents changing CRMs? Changing CRMs, the big issue with changing your CRM is your data. It's really interesting. Some people want to bring all their data across, you know, and, and for some people who haven't been nurturing that data, it can become quite messy. We encounter situations where there is a contact that is in the CRM 10 times and it's because they've got a different name there or the CRM they've been using. You would have to enter a surname into the database, but the agent's didn't know the surname, so they just put a dot in there. So it, it creates all these duplicates. So some of the issues around changing CRMs is around that data import. And unfortunately for the CRM providers, we can only work with what we're given. So if, if the current CRM doesn't deliver the information in a workable way or a clean way, it's very hard to bring that in. But it shouldn't be a thing that holds you back from moving to something better because there's no point sticking with a CRM that's not really working for you. It's just becoming untidy. You're better off wiping the slate clean, moving on to something new and fresh. And there might be elements within that current CRM you want to bring across. So, you know, you might bring across all your past clients. You might bring across future sellers, your landlords and things like that. You know, so essential data, important data. That's one of the big things when changing CRMs, I suppose. Yeah. That's like condoing your database, isn't it? A little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's that. There's also, I suppose, an education process for a lot of people. And what we find is you've got to get the team excited by it too. Mm. There's nothing worse than bringing a, a new system on for the office and you don't have everyone's acceptance of that. Yeah. That can be tricky. 
because a lot of people don't like change. They are quite content doing what they're doing, doing it the way they've been doing it for years, and then to have this new system thrust onto them doesn't work for some people. So it's really important when, I suppose, companies like ours are demonstrating the product is that we are getting it in front of all the key stakeholders in the business, make sure that they're happy and it does everything that they require it to do. Yeah, forward. get them on the bus first. Definitely get them on the bus, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But to their credit, principals are very conscious of that. Most principals will not make a decision without, especially the office administrator. That's the key person, you know. If they're happy, <laughs> we're all happy. Yeah, so. because they know where everything is, right? And that's yeah. right. And I suppose further to that, the agents these days are very conscious of the mobile app. The mobile app has to work quickly, has to be able to capture data quickly, be able to enter people into inspections quickly. So, yeah, it's funny how different areas of the office will need different things from the CRM. Yeah, interesting. So let's just talk about technology in general. Like are you an early adopter of technology yourself? No. 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 (laughs) What are your favourite technology tools at the moment? I am intrigued by AI. It is a bit of a a buzzword at the moment and there are some companies doing some really good things with AI. But again, like with our automation, I think there is a balance there. And I think with AI, people have to still do the job. They still have to call people. They still, you know, there's no point creating a list of prospects who we know are going to do something in the next month or whatever unless we're going to pick up the phone and call these people. Mm. Otherwise, they're going to wander off and do their own thing. So that, that intrigues me, that area. We were looking at properties, I won't say where because I won't give it away. We contacted a number of agents in a particular office. They wouldn't have been an Eagle office, but um, <laughs> contacted a number of agents and we didn't get a return, one return phone call or one return text or nothing basically. And then three days later we got an automated email from an inspection we'd registered for to say, oh, by the way, if we can help you with your property needs, don't hesitate to reach out. And I'm thinking, you couldn't return a phone call. And yet I'm getting this automated email saying, don't hesitate to reach out. I don't think I will. So it's almost like what you are just saying there, which is don't forget to pick up the phone. You've got to pick up the phone. I don't get it. And that's why I think people rely too much on technology. Mm. Um, Technology is good. And if it helps you be more efficient and you can use it to your advantage, but a lot of people just simply rely on the technology and I don't think it's working for those types of people. There is that balance there. So that intrigues me. We're always interested in new apps that are coming out because I think we are going very mobile. So apps that make things quicker and easier for agents out on the road, I'm intrigued by those. And I suppose the other part of technology is um, consolidation. You know, it's quite interesting that You know, there's a lot of providers out there and we all do our own little thing very well. But we're not, I believe, the marketplace is looking for that all-in-one solution. And when we have principals who have come from outside of real estate, you know, they're from the corporate world, they just cannot believe that it's not that all-in-one solution, Mm. you know, to run my office. They're just, oh, so I have to get a subscription with these people and for this and a subscription for that. So I think... The more the companies move towards consolidating solutions within their package, they're the ones that are going to come out on top rather than just working in your own little area of expertise. Yeah. I absolutely get that. Okay, so prediction time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I think you just did predict something then, but um, where do you see technology heading in the next decade? Definitely mobile. It's going to be mobile You've seen them on the movies where, you know, a screen pops up and where so it's hard with a podcast to demonstrate what I'm doing, but I'm looking at things and I'm touching things in, in air, basically. Wave, waving hands around. Yeah, but it's my <laughs> yeah. CRM essentially projected in front of me through the phone or something like that. I think that'd be pretty cool. But um, I think mobile is the way forward, especially with what we do in real estate because we're out and about all the time. So anything that can help in the mobile world, will be a winner in the real estate space. And so now that you are a regular and elite agent, what sort of things will you be writing about in the future? What's everyone got to look forward to? I think what I'd like to do is just help people with looking at this CRM or looking at this solution in a different way, looking at ways to make it more efficient, maybe even questioning what they're doing at the moment because, yeah, a lot of people got the blinkers on and a lot of people just stuck in that rut or, you know, they're content with what they've got. But what they don't realise is that there's something better out there. And all it takes is for you to maybe uh, be aware of it, 
and have a look at it and then see if it works for you. So, And that's the thing. There's so many solutions out there and they're all not going to fit. Not one solution is perfect for everybody. You know, there's horses for courses. So, you know, some solutions will suit some businesses and won't suit others. So I think what I'd like to do is open people's minds to the possibilities of something that they're probably not doing at the moment. Yeah, because you've got to think about it in multiple dimensions. You know, a database is just a database, but what can you do with it? And there's so many things you can do with data these days. Like, oh, yeah. It's we, cool. <laughs> it is really cool. And we've we've actually put a lot of time and effort into advanced filtering and we can get really creative with what we can filter the data on so that we can then find a, a targeted list and then we can communicate with them more you know, share with them different things. Once you have that data, yeah, what do I do with it next? You know, there's no point building this big database and not doing anything with it, you know. So also you've got some resources and things like that that people can contact you about. Like if people are interested in email sequences and things like that. Definitely. You know, you've actually got some really great examples. Yeah, definitely. We've got, oh, it'd be close to 100 100 plus automations ready to go for people. If anyone is interested in, you know, just seeing them, you can implement them yourself if you want to into your own CRM. We have them pre-written, ready for our clients to use straight away, but we'd happily share those with people, you know, give them to them. We don't have exclusivity over that. And they have been a combination of feedback that we get from our clients and things that they're doing. And we go, hey, that's a great idea. Do you mind if we share it with our, our clients? And our clients are great. They're happy to help the industry as well yeah so if they they love coming up with new ideas and we build it into an automation and then they release it we'll leave some um contact details in the show notes for people to get in touch with you but is there a particular way that they can get a hold of these templates is there a link or something like that yes we will be providing a page where people can request that information to be sent to them so I think we're going to have a special elite agent URL for that. So that won't be too far away. But if they do visit our our website, geteagle.com.au, just simply on the contact page, put in a message you'd like the automation sent to you and we can organise that to go back to you. That would save some people a heap of time because I know some agents do not like writing. (laughs) No, and it's hard. It really is hard. Like you're sitting there in front of the screen what do I write? You know, how is it written? But if we can give them a template which is close to what they want, they can then go and tweak it. That's amazing. Well, Trevor, it's been really cool having a chat with you about technology and databases and and all that sort of thing this morning, and we've learnt heaps. If there was one thing that you would like the gang to remember, what would it be? Be open to new possibilities with your CRM and your data. Open your eyes. There's a bigger world out there. And keep it up to date, right? Definitely keep it up to date. <laughs> <laughs> at, least, um, at least five a day. Yeah, even do that. Or even do one a day. You know, if you did one a day, that's 360-something records per year that you've tidied up. And again, call those people. Make sure that their email is correct or their phone number is still correct. People change numbers. People change jobs, different email addresses. So don't assume that the data is up to date. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, absolutely. That is good advice. Trevor Bragg, thank you so much. Thank you, Samantha. Great to be here. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Elevate with thanks to connectnow.com.au. Don't forget to download your written action guide from this podcast containing extra tips, links and shortcuts. Visit EliteAgentElevate.com. 